Hello and welcome to today's webinar on how to choose the right e-commerce for your business. Our presenter is Michael Linzer, who is the founder and CEO of Reinteractive, a software development company specializing in the Ruby on Rails application development framework. With hundreds of successfully delivered projects for clients and a passion for intelligently solving software and business problems, Michael has a wealth of experience to share with us. So with no further ado, um, I'd like to introduce Michael. Thank you very much, Virginia, and thank you everyone for arriving today on time, and uh, I will make this nice and quick. So I'm very uh, good at controlling time on these sorts of things. So if you have any questions or want to ask anything as we're going through, don't hesitate. Just whack up a, uh, a question in the chat section, and uh, we will make sure it gets answered as we go through. It's actually really good if you do ask questions like that because then I get to see them and the webinar changes uh, to suit what it is you all want to know about. So again, thanks for being here and uh, let's get rolling. Good, so who am I? Uh, my name is Michael, that's my mugshot. I founded Reinteractive about 10 years ago. We've become the largest Ruby on Rails focused company in the Asia Pacific region as far as I know. Uh, I've created and sold two SaaS companies and I'm a well-known computer uh, contributor to open source. Uh, I've written quite a lot of software and yeah, that's who I am. Uh, in terms of who I am regarding to e-commerce, uh, we've done a lot of very successful e-commerce projects over the years. Uh, probably the most famous one was we rewrote the Australian Broadcasting Corporation's e-commerce platform uh, into a custom platform that uh, about 10 years ago now, uh, it's since been changed uh, about two years ago. They had a restructuring at the ABC and they had to get rid of certain developers and stuff like that with uh, cost cutting. So they went to a different platform, but uh, our platform served them very well for about eight or nine years. And it actually turned out to be uh, so successful that they shut down quite a few of their brick and mortar stores and uh, their profits went up quite considerably. So we're very proud of that. We like helping auntie. So why are we having this talk? Well. Per Australia Post uh, and Statista, Statista, eight out of 10 Australians shop online. So 80.8% of Australians are shopping online at the moment and very soon one out of 10, if the trends continue, will be purchased off e-commerce stores and solutions. This is pretty mind blowing. Uh, I remember when I was a young kid, about eight or seven, I think, back in the early 80s, I said to my stepfather at the time that one day people would buy cars off the internet and I was told don't be stupid uh, that would never happen so anyway I was right <laughs> and it's coming true you know it, you buy cars you buy pretty much everything on the internet the only thing that doesn't really get purchased these days is really large ticket items like houses and stuff but you still do all the research on the internet and you're effectively buying it online you're just not clicking checkout so it's it's amazing statistic how much there is happening online these days and pretty much any company that wants to be relevant these days needs to provide a way for their customers to purchase things online by 2021 the economic market penetration will reach 85 and a, 85 and a bit percent uh, and the number of people buying online will be 22 million and that's just australia so if you look at the global reach of this it's it's pretty incredible So when you're looking at buying an e-commerce system, if you have that sort of a, an idea about how quickly the market's changing, the, there's quite a few things you need to look at when you're buying that e-commerce system. You know, you got to look at how you're going to improve conversion rates if you're already on one. Uh, you want to provide the e-commerce system to improve some sort of customer experience. Like that's why you're getting it. Uh, you, you're producing this system so that people can buy from you in a much more simple way. But when you're doing that, you also need to look at some other factors. You know, what's the return on investment? What's the cost here? How how is this going to actually improve your bottom line, not make it worse? Are there any benefits to be found in business processes? You know, can we automate some of the things that we're currently doing in the in our regular storefront, for example, to save on some manual entry or data entry time? And how can our e-commerce system actually help us reduce manual errors or increase or not increase delivery time that really should be improved delivery time but uh, improved delivery time so how can we improve that delivery time and 
and how can we make sure that when we're delivering this service to our customers, it's actually going to make their lives simpler and our lives simpler. And what sort of features and customizability are there? This is a pretty important one because quite often, if anyone on here has had a previous e-commerce platform and, okay, we've got about half the room on e-commerce currently and half not, so that's, that's good to know. But that means about half of you have gone through a situation where you've installed an e-commerce platform and then you haven't been able to add what you needed to it or you got stuck with it and couldn't do the next thing, which is maybe why you're here at a webinar on how to choose an e-commerce system. So this features and customizability long-term is really important. And it's, it's one of the key things that we're going to talk about because as you uh, are looking at what the features and customizability are, you need to know that you can keep expanding this thing into the future and the massive investment you're going to do now won't stop you being able to do what you want to do in the future. So the truth is, like any software project, there's probably no limit on how much money you can spend building out your e-commerce environment. Uh, I challenge anyone to tell me that there would be a limit on how much money you could spend on this. Uh, you literally can spend millions and millions and millions. Um, it really simply comes down to how much budget you have and what your imagination is. There's always another feature that you could add. Uh, there's always another tweak that you can make. There's always another promotion that you could run. Uh, there is no limit. It's, it's like anything in terms of building systems and software, uh, and it's the first rule of the uh, software axioms that I've been putting together that features will always exceed available budget features desired will always exceed available budget. So if you know that, then you can approach this from a more you know, rigorous manner. You wanna have a look at, well, what features are absolutely critical to getting us live and what are nice to have? And then focus on those critical features, get that happening, and you'll be able to get live much, much, much faster. Less cost obviously means less automation and more staff manual handling. And if you're just starting out, maybe that's fine. But as you grow and your volumes grow, every time you manually handle something or do a manual entry, you're entering a chance for something to be done incorrectly. So you want to reduce that um, manual work and introduce more automation. And that's going to create more cost in building the system, but you should recover some of that cost in a higher transaction rate. So what you ideally want is a system that can start fairly simple for you and then grow with you and grow with the company to expand out. So when you're looking at making the e-commerce system effective, uh, you wanna have a look at some of these things. So e-commerce as an idea is a lot more than just a web page and a storefront. This is actually one of the most common things I see that people who run into problems on e-commerce have had in the past. They viewed the e-commerce platform as something that sort of bolted onto their company off the side and it just does its own thing. And truthfully, services like Shopify and, and WooCommerce and uh, BigCommerce and even eBay stores and Amazon stores, they've actually made this a thing almost. And, you know, it's, it's not necessarily bad, but what they've done is they've made it so easy to get a store online that you don't really have to take much thought around, well, how does this actually integrate with the rest of our organization? Um, Shopify and, and these sorts of platforms have a massive ecosystem of plugins and all that sort of stuff. And definitely you can fill in a lot of those gaps, but quite often someone will start a store without really going through, well, how's this going to integrate with our ERP? What's our CRM on this? Like, how do we get to know our customers? How do we make sure that we understand who's buying from us? How do we market to those customers? Can we intelligently predict or give recommendations on the next product that they should buy? Uh, how can we do all of these sorts of things? So that's where you want to really look at how to grow that company into the future and, and really integrate that e-commerce solution into your storefront. A really key thing here is the simpler the design, the higher the conversion rate. This has been tested in many, many places and it's come out as a as a very powerful thing to have. The, the simpler the design and the more guided really the design, 
the higher your conversion rate's going to be. If you've got a thousand and one different things on the screen all clamoring for attention, the customer's not going to see the checkout button as easily. Uh, and that checkout button can be lost, lost in the mix. So you want to try and reduce your your complexity of the site as much as practical. You know, I mean, sometimes you need to have a bit of complexity on there and that's fine, but really make sure that you can make it as simple as possible. The, the number one thing you want to do is make it easy for someone to buy from your company. You know, if, if, if you take anything away from this, when you're building e-commerce and you're choosing an e-commerce solution, you want to make it simple for someone to buy something from your company. The second thing you want to do actually, which I don't have on this slide, but once they've bought, you've got to make it easy for them to interact with you on a service point of view. You know, there's an old saying that the car is the service, the sales division sell the car or they sell the first car, the service division sell every car after that. And this is a really important point. So you want to make it easy for them to interact with you and, and that your service support staff know who the customer is. And we'll show you some ideas around that in a minute. Really consider how you're going to integrate your back office solutions and integrations. So are you just doing an e-commerce platform here or are you going to integrate that with your customer relationship management system? Are you going to integrate it with your ERP system? How are you going to do that? Uh, do you have a point of sale system you need to integrate? Do you have some stores, physical stores that you need to have the same pricing on at all times between your online and the physical store, for example? Uh, how do you keep all those product descriptions up to date so that your inside sales team who are doing some business to business sales are looking at the same product description that the website's showing so that your customer doesn't get confused when they go to the website later and see some other price or other description? How can you handle all that? How do you do, uh, how do you do the process of knowing who your customers are? You know, when they sign up on a cart, a lot of E-commerce solutions out there have a very basic and fundamental customer relationship management system or CRM where you really only have a name and an email. There's no uh, integrations to, to Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook or you don't get to know that customer and, and see a history of that customer and really can work with that customer. How do you do remarketing? You know, how do you uh, plug into some powerful uh, remarketing tools or uh, email workflow tools and things like that. Is that an additional expense? Is that part of the base system? How are you going to make that work? And how do you make your checkout process nice and simple, like I said above? And then finally, abandoned cart solutions. 63% uh, is the number I read yesterday of checkouts just don't go through at all. Um, and that abandoned cart solution helps you target that customer, get them back into communication with your organization perhaps offering them some sort of an incentive to finish that uh, transaction. So these are important effectiveness points. The other thing you need to consider is what channels are you selling on? Uh, B2C, business to consumer, or B2B, business to business, or another one which we're working a lot with now, which is business to distributors, which is sort of like business to business, but you're selling to uh, sort of like a sales team of your own organization. So B2D, uh, I, I've never seen B2D anywhere listed, so I'm claiming it as a new type of category that we've invented. <laughs> so B2D is an important thing for a lot of companies. We're actually doing a, a major re-implementation of a very large name brand in Australia of their e-commerce solution. And that company does a lot of sales through its distributor network. So those distributors need to be able to log in to their e-commerce solution and see their pricing, uh, which obviously is at a cheaper rate than the average consumer or even the average business. So the e-commerce solution needs to be able to handle that difference in uh, marketing and communication. Make sure that your the customers are each seeing the right pricing for what they need. You really need to find a solution that's going to handle every channel that you're selling to on the on with one platform. You, you don't want to have one site for your consumers, one site for your business customers, one site for your distribution network. You want to bring all that into one, one channel, one system, one solution that's going to reuse all of your product image assets and all of your product descriptions and 
all of that stuff which takes thousands of hours to create. You know, you craft the perfect image. Well, you don't want to need to go and do that again for two more channels if you're just selling to other businesses or you're selling to distributors. You want that in one system that is just going to reuse that same content across those companies as appropriate. Of course, less double work equals less errors and much higher confidence in the customer. You know, if you've spent all this work handling your business to consumer site and then the distributors lock in, log in and none of the none of the products have images on them because you haven't gotten around to doing it on that site as well, that's just going to reduce their confidence and it's going to affect your bottom line. Another key one is, is your choice, choice going to be a bit future-proof? Now, look, truthfully, nothing is future-proof. Uh, the future will change in ways that we have no idea. But you can mitigate that. You know, you don't want to be replatforming every couple of years. Uh, if you're if you're replatforming every 10 or 15 years, well, okay, you know, maybe that's maybe that's just a cost of doing business. Um, but a good solution might last 10, 15 years and, and might upgrade with you. So you really want to look at what are my options here to extend this? Am I buying a software as a service solution where if I want a new feature, it's tough luck, you know, it, it may or may not get developed at some point in the future? Or am I buying some sort of a hybrid solution that if I want a new feature, I can just pay a developer and go get that built? You know, you need to understand what it is you can do here and where you want to take the company and, and how you want to expand this online trading. So really make sure that what you're building is going to last a long time or an appropriate amount of time. You know, a really simple site, yeah, you can get away with Shopify and, and those sorts of things. More complex, not so much. You need to look at how you can uh, develop it to be what you want. And part of this really is sticking to your own knitting. So if what you do is sell widgets, well, maybe creating a whole development team to build the website to sell widgets is not really what you need to be doing. You need to be going out there and building and marketing better widgets. However, on the other side, say you're iconic. Iconic don't make anything of their own, really. I mean, they might, but primarily iconic are selling. Like their, their product is sales. So the thing that they produce as a company is the sale of goods. So for them, it makes a lot of sense to have an internal team that's building out their whole stack to build exactly what they want. If your if your job is sourcing and and creating fantastic baby clothes, for example, I think one of our attendees does that because uh, she said she was joining. Then you know you don't want to build out a whole IT team to build out your uh, e-commerce website because you're going to get a much bigger bang for buck finding the next lot of baby clothes or creating that next marketing campaign or producing that uh, fantastic uh, combination that can sell really well. So this is where you need to look at, well, how much of my time am I going to invest in this? How much is going to be on, on actually building the platform and how much is going to be building the business that uses the platform, do you see? So you really got to identify, is your business the platform? Or is the platform something that helps your business? If it's the first one, then yeah, you should skill up and have a full development team and just make that thing hum. Amazon's a great example. The platform is the business, yeah? eBay is a great example. The platform is the business. A seller on eBay, the platform helps the business. So they don't want to create a whole development team. You want to outsource that. You want to get someone on, on hand. Having said that, any platform you choose, you want to make sure that you have uh, enough ability to customize that as needed. You don't want to be going back to that next development team or the, or the same developers that put it together for every little change you want to make. You know, if, if there's some fundamental changes, yeah, fair enough. That makes sense. But it, you want to be able to change descriptions, images, special prices, featured prices, all that sort of stuff you want to be able to just do yourself. If you want to change the checkout flow, well, yeah, that would make sense to go to a developer to, to fix that up or modify that. Which leads into this next thing that as you grow, things are going to get a lot more complex, <laughs> which is both good and bad. So the more staff you get on board, you're going to create different challenges. You know, So a really good example of this, I had a, I had a client of mine 
we're replatforming their business now onto our Store Connect solution, which I'll go over in a minute. And they were sending uh, ads into, like they were paying for Google AdWords to land on a website on a special, on a, on a certain product they were selling. And one of their staff decided that, well, that product is out of stock, so we're going to turn it off in the e-commerce platform. They didn't inform the marketing team, so then all this money every week was being sent on Google AdWords, sending people to a, to a page that says, sorry, we don't stock this product, which you can understand probably annoyed the order a little bit. But this is an example of where you get more stuff. You know, if you have a simple platform like uh, some of the SaaS platforms out there like Shopify, a lot of the time the access level is sort of all or nothing. You know, you can either edit everything or you can edit nothing. And you want a little bit more control around that. You want to be able to add more stuff in a confident manner that they're not going to just destroy the website. You might have multiple staff handling sales, service, or support roles. So if you have this backed onto a, a really powerful uh, CRM or, or some sort of a solution where your support team can see all the orders that the customers made and your sales team can see all those orders, and that that all can be communicated. That information needs to be shared between teams. But the really important thing is that as you grow, you wanna make sure that when a customer contacts your company, they feel like a VIP because you know who they are. You know their history, you might even know their birthday, so you can send them a birthday promotion, all this sort of stuff. So that's where you really wanna capture some of that data. Really, at the end of the day, it's all about the customer. So. The customer is the one that is going to make or break your company. And the expectations of your ability to service the business to customer and the business to business, and now the brand new category business to distributor, uh, has changed. People expect that process to be smoother, cleaner, and more you know, customized to what they need and what they're expecting. Uh, your challenge as a e-commerce provider right now is how do I produce a site that just works as everyone would expect? And that's really tall order these days. It's getting harder and harder to do that. And it's not just how does the site look? It's how do we interact with that customer into the future? When they come back to us in, in two years, do we have a record of who they are? Can we bring up that they bought this widget two years ago? Now they're buying another one of those widgets. Well, hang on a minute. Did the old widget break as it worn out in two years? Maybe we can contact them and ask. All this sort of data and information you want to start gathering. Emerging technologies like AI are shaping online businesses. Um, I, I really don't like the term AI. Uh, there is no real thing as artificial intelligence. Uh, artificial intelligence was created by intelligence, which is humans. And really all it is is machine learning. It's a, a way for computers to spot some patterns and make some predictions that are purely based on statistics on what the next pattern is that will appear. However, having said that, machine learning and AI are, are really forming the future of, of e-commerce and helping customers find the products that they actually do need, uh, which is a very powerful way to do it. Trust has become a massive part of customer relationships. Uh, you don't want to build an e-commerce platform that's going to have some sort of security leak and leak all your data out there. Uh, people want to know that you're on a platform and, and looking after their data and that you're only asking for the data you actually need for that customer. So if there are any questions at this point, uh, please don't hesitate to ask them. Just throw a chat question up there and I'll get to it uh, as we're talking. I've got the chat window open so I can see them as soon as they come up. So what I'm going to talk to you now a bit is uh, the idea of what is our product in this marketplace and why it can fit and answer some of these questions. So you've probably heard about Store Connect uh, if you work with us at all or if you've seen any of our marketing. And I want to talk about what Store Connect is and, and why we built it in order to handle some of these situations that are coming up in the e-commerce environment. So we built Store Connect as a little ironically something to not reinvent solutions to problems that are already solved. Um, and you go, well, hang on a minute, you just built an e-commerce platform, isn't that a solved problem? Well, yeah, yeah, it is um, in many cases, but it's also not. There's some pretty cool uh, parts of what Store Connect does that, that makes it pretty
pretty different to what's already out there. We figured it was smart to leverage some best in class solutions. And we wanted to provide an end-to-end -end IT solution for our clients that creates a great journey for their customers. So what do I mean by all that? Well, we didn't go out and build an e-commerce platform from scratch. We wanted to do something very, very powerful and really shift the needle on what e-commerce could be. And what we decided to do is we decided to partner with the world's number one CRM, which is Salesforce. And what Salesforce brought to us is an ability to uh, work with an existing customer relationship management system and bolt on e-commerce on the top of that. If you've looked at any of the Salesforce presentations recently, Salesforce talks a lot about customer 360. And the idea there is that you have one CRM that's going to have all of the data about all of your customers and all of your products in one system that all of your staff can interact with. And that's a powerful feature. If you have everything in one CRM and say someone buys a widget for you from you, that gets logged in the system and it gets shipped and the, the fulfillment team see it in the Salesforce environment and they ship it. They mark that as complete. That customer now receives it. And then say it's on the weekend and they can't contact any of your sales team because your sales team aren't available. They're, they're off on the weekend uh, and they've made so much money they're out skiing in Canada or something. I don't know. So, that customer can't just contact their salesperson and say, hey, the, the widget's broken, I need some help. So what they do is they jump on the website and then they log in using their special username because they remember their salesperson told them that if you ever buy something from the website, use your special username because you're going to get 3% or 5% off all of our listed items if you use your username. So the, the, the client logs in, uses their username, signs into it, and Store Connect, because it's hooked onto Salesforce, can see that customer, see all the previous products they've purchased, and can even make a recommendation about the right spare part that that customer needs. And have that listed there on the sidebar or something like that. Hey, we noticed you bought this lawnmower. Here are some common spare parts that people need for the lawnmower. That sort of thing can be built into the platform. That customer then purchases that spare part, it gets shipped on Monday, they receive it Tuesday morning, and they find out it doesn't fit. So they go back to the website and uh, they click the live chat button and talk to a support rep and the support rep goes, oh, I see you bought the lawnmower ABC in the spare part DEF. I'm really sorry, that's a problem in our system. We sent you the wrong thing. I'm organizing to send you the right spare part right now, free shipping, there you go. Now as a customer, you feel fantastic. You haven't had to go in and explain what happened and why it was wrong and, and all this sort of stuff, you're just getting the right experience. On top of that, your sales rep would see all of this data on Wednesday and see this in their dashboard saying that you'd purchased stuff and then you'd had a support request and a case. So they can call you up and say, hey, Joe, sorry about that situation. Um, you know, I, I'm, I can see it's happening and it's fixed. Is there anything else I can help you with? They've got all the same data. This is a really powerful feature. And it's why uh, we build it that way. One of the other things we can do when we have this environment sitting on top of Salesforce is we can actually provide multiple storefronts. So you as a company might have three or four different brandings or stores that you're selling your products under. You might have the business to consumer store, the business to business store, and the business to distributor store, all with different pricing, all with different looks and feels. We can support that on top of Store Connect, and because we're on top of Salesforce, we can support that all the way into your CRM. All the pricing that you do would be within Salesforce, all the different price books and things you make for different customers, all that sort of stuff gets done, and it just becomes easy. But the most important part of it is that single customer view. Being able to just see what the right data is for that customer at that point in time when you're talking to that customer as a owner of the platform. You know, I, 
I don't know how many times I've run companies and they just have no idea who I am and I have to fight my way through different lots of information to give them the right order numbers and all this sort of stuff. This just simplifies that in a massive way. But one of the other wonderful things on the Salesforce environment or Store Connect being on top of that is Salesforce has this massive thing called the App Exchange, which is basically a whole heap of plugins and apps. And by building your e-commerce platform on top of Salesforce, you get to use that whole App Exchange, adding extra features and tools and things that you want onto your uh, Store Connect e-commerce platform, such as marketing with uh, Marketing Cloud or uh, doing business consumer abandoned cart things with Marketing Cloud, Einstein Analytics being able to respond and, and get the right service or the right product to the right person, Service Cloud, all these sorts of things that you can do. They're all plugins and all additional uh, clouds that you can add. And as I mentioned before, the whole customer support thing, you've got people who know what it is you're talking about. And when you call up to ask, they can sit there and give you the right data. So they're the main things that I wanted to go over. Uh, I am very interested in answering any specific questions you have. So please go ahead and put them in the chat message. Thank you very much for attending. I'll end off now and uh, thank you very much. See you later.